Okay, and then throughout, um, I'll just start dropping in the bios for all of our speakers because you can't see them until you're, you can't see what's in the chat room until you're actually in our room with us, so. Okay. All right, so my name is Jenna Gausman. I'm a full-time career counselor in the Career Services Center. Uh, I see a lot of familiar names on, on this, uh, coming into this uh, chat. And uh, you know what, thank you for being here. It's 11.15 on a Thursday afternoon, Thursday morning. Um, there's, there's definitely homework assignments and other things you could be doing, but uh, we have four amazing panelists that have joined us um, from New York to Los Angeles, and I'll let them share what they do and their names in just a minute. But uh, keep in mind that if you have any questions as we're going, go ahead. Vicki and I are very fluid facilitators. And um, as you see, you, we have several business professors here. We have Enrique, um, Professor Lopez, and Professor Sedke. So if you have anything in the chat, um, any questions, feel free to use the chat as we move forward. Um, I do have a tip getting back to being on camera. I did discover yesterday that if you are on camera, you come to the front of the screen. And who knew that, that Zoom actually is pushing anyone on camera, they push people to the, uh, to the screen number one. So uh, if you ever take my um, interviewing on Zoom or uh, we're going to create a new workshop for the spring, right, Vicki? Yes. On how to create a Zoom presence and yes. uh, an online presence. So. Oh, and one last thing, you guys, for anyone, sorry, Jenna, for anyone who's here today but needs extra credit for a class, like a class that I'll give you extra credit, throughout this, I will go ahead and drop in the link that you click on to fill in that you were here, and then we'll report it back to your teacher. So I'll start doing that because I can see people saying that they're here as part of a class as well. Okay. All right, so, and Biggie might chime in during the chat. She's going to monitor the chat as I ask the questions to our panelists. So question number one, I feel like we're a game show, right? Let's have some fun here. Um, Steven, I don't have any giveaways today because <laughs> we're on Zoom. <laughs> I usually bring raffle tickets. Um, but uh, all right, so our first question is if the panelists, and, and I'll call you, on, um, why don't we, um, I'll start with Carlos. If we could start with your name, your title, um, the company you work for, and how you found this career path, like just in about, like if you could keep that to two to three minutes. Sure. Thank you, Jenna. Um, it's glad, I'm glad to be here and see everyone. Uh, just for the record, I also went to community college, and I think it was the best time because professors are really 100% invested in you, whereas once you transition, they may have to do research and <clears throat> publications, excuse me, um, so I know the path. Right now, I work for Merrill Lynch. It was quite a career change. I didn't start that right. My name is Carlos Alberto Solano Ortiz, and I work for Merrill Lynch as a financial advisor. I'm currently in training, so I do have to take some exams before I can get licensed, and um, I'll keep it at that for now. Yeah. Thank you, Carlos. All right, Eitan. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Eitan Rothman. Uh, I am a product manager for Macy's. Uh, I work on the e-commerce business, and my product is, uh, is uh, advertising technology on the Macy's website. And Eitan, where are you located right now? I'm based in uh, New York City. All so right. I apologize. I have my window open because uh, the heat's on and it's a bit warm. So I apologize if there are sirens in the background or something. No, that's that's fine. It kind of makes us feel like we're in in um, NYC, which is one of my favorite cities on this planet. So thank you for being here, Ellen. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ellen Wintner. I am a senior manager of U.S. Immigration in the Human Resources Department at Disney. So. That's a mouthful. Um, I am not an attorney, so I think my career path, and we'll talk about it obviously, is a good example of unexpected twists and turns and how some professions exist that you may not even know exist um, at the start of your career. So um, I've been at Disney seven and a half years um, and got the job soon after I moved to LA. I'm originally from New Jersey, then lived in Chicago and came to LA. And um, that's about it for now. That's awesome. So you've been in Los Angeles seven years then? Um, 
closer to nine. It's closer yeah. to nine. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. At this point. No. All right. So no, you guys, I have a colleague here where I work. Um, she and her partner moved here. Her wife moved here from Chicago in January and then COVID-19. <laughs> and she's like, I don't even know what Los Angeles is about. So I, I feel I, I chat with her about it. So, all right, Robert, tell us um, name, title, company you work for, and just a little bit how, you know, yeah. How you found your career? Super excited to talk to you guys all. Uh, my name is Robert Torres. I'm currently the CEO of Millennials Digital. We do social media uh, marketing for the most part, everything from production, uh, some e-commerce, and uh, yeah, influencer campaigns has kind of been our world for the last seven, eight years. Uh, Co-founded it, so it's been a lot of fun. And I'm here in Los Angeles as well. Uh, Los Angeles, Mexico City. Yeah, we're starting an office in, in Mexico, so that's kind of been fun. Um, nice. yeah, super excited to share uh, whatever I can with you guys. Yeah. Well, great. Well, welcome everyone. And so the, the next step is, and then um, you guys know Enrique and Steven, do you want to introduce yourselves really quickly since you are sponsoring this event? Where, where'd they go? Sure. I'm Steven Senke. I'm faculty in the business department. Um, so I teach introduction to business and marketing. So I've been at the college for about seven years. Before that, uh, I was actually at Apple for 10 years of writing positions. Uh, primarily in the store, everything from store management to B2B sales to employee training and development. Excited to be here. Enrique? Hi, I'm Enrique. I'm going on my second year at Santa Monica College. I'm in the business department. I teach accounting. Uh, most recently, I was a fractional CFO for restaurant companies. Uh, and prior to that, I work um, entertainment as well, restaurant companies. Um, and public accounting, Deloitte, uh, Disney as well. So I was a cast member, Ellen, uh, as well. Um, Time Warner Interactive, Fox Film, uh, um, Pizza Hut, and Panda Restaurant Group. Nice. All right. Enrique, Enrique, I just chatted you a question privately. Can you look and answer me right now, please? Okay. Thank you. So, um, and actually a little bit about my background. I was a business major. I'm um, at, from Pepperdine University. I have my bachelor's degree in business and I had 15, like Ellen, I actually had 15 years in corporate HR. So, all right, here we go. So the first question I would like to have um, Carlos answer is, um, and then I'll have Ellen answer after that, is describe a typical work day. Um, if you could describe a typical work day um, in, your, in your field right now. So sure. some, of the, some of the, you know, what does it look like for our students in, in um, your industry and in your day? Sounds good, Jenna. I'll do that. Um, I think it will be more relevant if I talk a little bit more about what I did before, which I did for many years, because right now this role is very new for me and I'm still learning. Um, so my background is very technical. I did physics and math and did research in nanotechnology. And then I did consulting around sustainability. So people may have heard terms like green building, uh, supply chain management, um, carbon emissions. So I used to track all of those and report to either their, the company's investors or other stakeholders. Um, so in that role, you do have to have, it's kind of a mix between a lot of technical analysis. So sometimes you're just all day in the computer analyzing data or getting in touch with people that have that data and getting it from them. And then at other times, you may be in a position where you're actually selling, or you may be trying to sell your solution within a specific company. So you want to really have those, those social skills to connect with people because uh, you may have to get everybody on board. So marketing, accounting, finance, operations, um, see what they what conflicts they may have and try to implement that into all the numbers that you're running into the solution how it's going to be implemented um, so consulting um, in a way is a very varied um, you have a lot of work throughout the day and it, it could look very different every day all right great and some and some of your clients so you would be you'd be assisting clients um, do you have some of the clients sure. that you've worked for that you can share yeah, so uh, I did some work for private equity. What they do is they buy out companies and they try to implement uh, sustainability into their business model. So 
Some of those organizations include Gelson's, um, ADP, American um, Data Corporation. Yeah. Uh, Data processing. Yeah, I think so. Um, no, they're just they're paid. I know AD, <laughs> Ellen and I know ADP and HR. So, <laughs> yeah. And and really a range. I did some work for Shell, for the city of Houston, wow. for waste management. Um, so it's really kind of the whole range. And every industry or every company has its own unique challenges. Awesome. And when you start working, you want to have an eye for what's positive. So first of all, you want to congratulate them on what they're doing right before you move on to try to tell them what they're doing wrong. Uh, so that's kind of a, a consulting tip. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a great consulting tip. Yeah, the Oreo, right? You know, what you're doing right, what you need to exactly. work on, and also what you're doing right. All right, Ellen, tell us what it's like to be a immigration HR professional at Disney, which I know has about 180,000 employees worldwide, 280. It's a, it's a lot. Yeah, uh, about 200,000. 200, I also asked Ellen to talk about her previous position with um, the college yep. um, recruitment that he, she's done. Right. Um, yep. So in case you didn't have a chance to look at the bio um, part. So right now I'm in that immigration role that I described, but um, as of just a few months ago, I had been in a manager of campus recruitment role. So we were very closely dialed into your um, you know, your population, I would say. So we, we held recruitment events. We, um, we had entry-level rotational programs that rotated throughout all the businesses throughout Disney. We obviously did interns for all the seasons, fall, winter, spring, summer. So, um, so I can tell you about, um, commonalities that I would say are between those two positions, um, because I think there are broad kind of career things to learn, um, that are more, um, not necessarily uh, unique to one position or another. I just find myself, especially, you know, Disney is a very big place. Um, that's not news to anybody. Um, but, you know, in one given day, I can be talking to some an employees of our R&D department in Imagineering for our parks business and in the studios um, group who are working on the movies and someone else in ESPN who is in, you know, obviously doing other things. And so the ability to to pivot, um, to know who your audience is and to talk appropriately to each one is always important to me, whether I was in that role before or the one I'm in now. And the way that you learn that, because obviously if you just walk into the door, um, you don't know that, right? You, you don't know a culture, you don't know how a company is even structured or how to even approach um, understanding your job. And so the the common thread and something that I did when I was entry level um, starting out as well as today as a senior manager risen through the ranks is just really holding on to a lot of um, curiosity and responsiveness. So I, it, to me, those are two of the keys that, um, that show you as a serious employee and to whatever level you're at, you know, it doesn't mean you can be an executive five levels above where I am now or the intern starting out um, is that, and sorry if I'm jumping ahead, Jenna, but I, these, these thoughts are really, you know, on my mind literally every day, you know, the people I'm talking to, okay, I've been at Disney seven and a half years. I don't know much about the intricate details of a business. So to show curiosity and to show engagement in trying to understand what this business leader that I'm talking to or this foreign national who's on a visa and trying to understand that person's job so I could do my job better, what have you, whatever the scenario is. Um, you know, it's, it's constant engagement, constant curiosity. Um, and it pays off because you show that you're uh, an attentive and um, curious person, but you learn a lot. Um, and that is that only that pays dividends um, every day and all the time and in so many, in so many different ways. Um, somebody texted in the chat, what led you to discovering your job at Disney? Um, Jenna, I can answer that now, or we can just kind of do that. Go ahead, and then I'll, I'll, we'll go to yeah. the next question. Go ahead, Ellen. Okay. So, um, who asked that? It was Dev Devin. So Devin, thank you for the question. Um, so, my, my role at, at, at Disney, so as I said, it wasn't um, the ty this type of work, working on the human resources side of immigration. Um, it certainly, like I said, wasn't something I was looking for. Um, I was an English major hoping to get into publishing. <laughs> um, so there was uh, certainly a shift, um, but obviously 
um, it worked out. So on so my, my path into this world started at my prior employer. And so I guess I'll just kind of answer how I got into that area. Uh, they just said, listen, we have a need. So I decided instead of publishing, I was going to go into HR thinking that you need to have a certain amount of uh, leadership qualities and certain things that I felt that I had um, in addition to the publishing skills. So I left those behind and that was partially informed by my internship experiences. We'll get into that later probably, but, uh, but anyway, so, so I, I went, got into HR and I just wanted to, to go into general HR. But I'm, again, this is my last company. I said, hey, you know, we're, we have a lot of like visa holders in this company. Can you take care of that work? And I said, um, I will be very frank. I don't know anything about that, but I'm open to learning. They said, you seem smart. And again, showing that curiosity and showing that engagement, I think gave them that impression from the start. You know, well, you seem smart. You seem like you can pick it up. So let's, let's give it a try. And so that's how I got along, got on this path. Disney is unique in that we have a whole internal department assigned to this work. So not every company will have that. A lot of companies outsource this work. Um, but that is what directly led to taking a chance on this type of work led me to this role at Disney. So that's why, you know, keeping your eyes open, if something presents itself that you didn't foresee, don't run away, um, engage in that, like lean into that. What is that about? You know, um, and it's, it can certainly pay, pay dividends in, in, a, bit, in, in a major way. So Ellen, um, uh, so many of our students, maybe even on this call, are F-1 visas, which means they're on student visas, yep. and they do have eligibility to do internships, but mm -hmm. you're mostly managing the H-1 visas, correct? Uh, it's a whole mix. Um, it's a whole mix. Uh, there, are, there are H-1s, but there's many other types as well, but yes. So I'll, I'll leave it at that, because I think yep. we could spend the whole hour talking about the different visas. All right, let's go on to the next question. Um, Aton. Would you be willing to share with us um, what do you think, what do you, what, what would you recommend to our college students in preparation, like for the career that you're in and the position that you're in right now? What would be your recommendation as to like classes maybe that you would recommend, um, internships, like what, what do you wish you had known? Um, and, and I know, I know you very well, so you, you did do all the right steps, but is there anything that you would recommend to our students in preparation to move into careers that they're looking into? Yeah, I think I think um, that's a really good question, and I think that it's it's very easy to say, like looking back, it's easy to connect the dots, looking behind at where where you've been, and it's it's pretty hard to to sit at the beginning of that and say like, all right, how do I get to this moving forward? So probably the biggest thing for me along the road has just been, what do I like doing? What are my strengths? What are things that I'm again like um, uh, like Ellen was talking about like what are the things that I'm curious about and like how do I explore and learn more? Because my first professional experience was as a hardware development engineer at IBM, which was just like super duper technical, super duper like head down at a computer for eight hours a day. And that wasn't necessarily for me, but one thing that I liked about it was starting a project from the beginning, um, scaling it on my own, and then like handing it off to someone and like moving on to the next project. And that's something that I looked for and I really liked about e-commerce, uh, especially getting into it at the beginning of my career. Uh, there's a lot of places that want to hire young talent, the same talent pool that goes into, you know, banking or consulting. Like a lot of these bigger companies are just looking for people uh, with college degrees who are smart, show like, you know, a good work ethic and are willing to, to learn and sort of like bear the brunt of, a lot of busy work for, for the sake of like scaling a large business. And I got to apply that sort of like pick something up, grow it, and then hand it off to the next person um, during my time at Walmart. Um, sort of the essence of that and like learning that business and learning about e-commerce and even specializing through a really large company like Walmart as it was transitioning and, and growing to try to compete with uh, an Amazon. Um, I was able to get exposed to a lot of things and got really specialized into specific aspects of e-commerce. And that's sort of what led me to this like more technical role that I have now building a product. But I think for me, just like keeping my ears open and trying to like take an experience um, holistically and like focus on my strengths was, was really huge for me. Um, nice. All right. So Ellen mentioned she was an English major, which actually Ellen, um, there is a senior VP of corporate communications who was also an English major out of Columbia who loves English as a subject. 
Eitan, is there one or two subject matters when you look back on college that you would recommend to our students? Like most, most of our students on this call are business majors, but is there like, all right, if you have some electives, you know, would you recommend any specialization like English, philosophy, history, poli sci? Um, I think that probably the most useful class that I took in college is my senior year, I took a creative writing class creative writing. and learning is. how to convey <laughs> like ideas in your head that are very abstract on paper. Yes. Like I do every day. Yes. Um, Macy's is heavily modeled after Amazon, which if any of you are aware of like Amazon's culture is heavily document driven. Great. So I'm writing, I'm putting out like dozens of documents every week, articulating the thoughts and like the direction that I want my products to go. And just being able to solidify the words that I have in my brain on a page is, is astoundingly empowering. Um, separate you. from that, I also, I think that religion is really cool. Um, I grew up a modern Orthodox Jew. I was always curious about like other things in the world and um, learning a lot about like Indo-Tibetan culture. Um, Buddhism is a fascinating topic as well as like uh, Near East and East Asian um, cultures incredibly uh, enlightening as well as like Islam is you know fast and Christianity but I think I think religion is interesting because it's an ethos and you learn how people think and how people interact with each other um, and that's super fascinating and I see my panelists nodding in their heads as you're answering this question um, I actually have a cat maybe I don't know if Vicky knows our it's anyways we will put in the chat what our we have at SMC we have two creative writing classes and we have two religious study classes so I'm going to put that in the chat Robert you're up so tell us what you wish you, what advice would you give to these, to our college students as to what you wish you had maybe taken or known to get into the career that you're in? Yeah, definitely. I would definitely say apply yourself to things that you're interested in now so that way you can use the classes you're taking to facilitate furthering what you're doing outside of school. I think one of the things that I wish I would have done more is what I'm doing now so that way when I was in college, I was able to apply the classes a little bit more strategically. Um, I think there's so much to do in this current landscape of whether that's digital work or just business in general, there's so many business opportunities that school does provide a lot of tools that can help lessen the learning curve, let's just say. So really just getting out there doing these things now and then also applying what you're learning in class to those things can make your business venture, et cetera, so much more, um, so much more successful in, in a sense. I think it shortens the learning curve and yeah, I think, uh, but you have to really put yourself out there and try the things that you really want to pursue early on because the only way you'll get better at is by doing. <laughs> All right. Um, sorry, I was looking up. Uh, hey, you guys, remember these? Hard copy of our catalog. So this is probably the last copy I'll ever get. <laughs> I brought it from my office. All right, next question. If I could have, um, Robert, I'm going to come back to you. And if I could have you answer what special knowledge, skills, and abilities um, um, educational requirements are necessary? Um, so I'm kind of I'm kind of having you toggle one more time. So, yeah. um, in regards to like special, it's funny. A lot of the times that I look at people's resumes, I ask for certifications from actual platforms, right? You see Facebook, LinkedIn, all these platforms. Google have their own certification courses along with an understanding of branding and marketing for what we do, which is a digital marketing agency. I think that these, these courses are, are really helpful in what we do and, and understanding the landscape we, we live in daily. Um, when it comes to courses, I think in, in business, really taking marketing courses are gonna help you understand um, really in any vertical, like some things that are required or needed for a successful, whether that's campaign or business venture. Uh, so definitely emphasizing uh, marketing courses um, in particular, and then obviously going a little bit into the more, uh, I think right now, data science and obviously learning a lot more of, I guess, the whole, the whole world of data is really, uh, it's really important right now. And it's kind of meshing with marketing and those two conversations are happening heavily. Um, so just, yeah, probably marketing and data science are two things that I would tell students or business individuals to dive into so they have a general understanding of the conversation it doesn't have to be an in-depth level because I'm sure there's experts in each individual field, but really understanding where they're coming from is important. All right. So when you're recommending data science, you're also recommending then, um, and Stephen and I have been leading these for the past couple of years, and we've been hearing this consistently over the past two to three years, um, but basically layering in maybe a computer science um, programming class just to kind of 
Is that what, when you're talking about data science, are you talking about analytics and metrics or? Analytics and metrics, more okay. than uh, programming <laughs> development. I think there's a plethora of programming developers in the world. I think that when it comes to analytics and uh, I guess looking at the numbers, whether that's through an ad campaign or et cetera, I think it's really important to have a good grasp of how to digest those numbers, how to use them into your, yeah. in your advantage or how to kind of, I, I don't know, I'm speaking to a business class. It's kind of like from a marketing perspective, it's really useful, but from an overall business perspective, it also applies understanding your consumer, understanding, you know, what this uh, audience looks like and um, are they buying your product or service? And so you can have a better understanding of the marketplace in general. So yeah, a little bit more on the analytics side, I'd say. Okay, great. Um, uh, Carlos, uh, would, would you mind kind of fielding this question as well? And it's, uh, once again, it's a, what special knowledge, skills, abilities, and educational requirements? Um, and if you could address, do you need a master's degree or a PhD to get into your field, or is a bachelor's degree um, enough? Or, or like, is that, is that going to get you in? Um, definitely not. It's not a requirement per se. And I would say you also look, have to look at your finances if you're going to get scholarships. Uh, to be honest, I, I'm a first time college graduate and I didn't know anybody. And when you don't know, you don't even know what to ask about. Um, right. But it's been interesting. I'm very thankful for it. And it has opened up opportunities, but it's not a requirement. Uh, so I would say I would just want to underscore what my colleagues have said. Um, marketing, what Robert said, I think that is super important. It doesn't matter if you're very technical, if you're doing math or physics or engineering, if you can sell your project within your company or if you can communicate the value of what you're working on, um, then you can only go so far. So definitely in marketing, they talk a lot about biases, human biases, group biases. Uh, I think learning those are important. Humanities, Aiton said humanities also understanding people's worldview and how to, how to tailor your message to different groups import is very important. And finally, I think this is, at least for me, that curiosity that Ellen talked about mm -hmm. is number one, because mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how much studies you have, once you join the workforce, you still have a, a steep learning curve you're still gonna have to learn a ton. And people pick up on your, your questions or your curiosity on how quickly you start doing things. Um, and one of the things that I've come to learn is that when we're younger, we're very impatient. So we wanna make an impact right away and I don't feel like I'm having an impact. Just be patient. Everything takes time. So be willing to have the courage, the work ethic, the curiosity to go in deep and spend at least a few years at any one um, project so that you really gain the value of seeing it through. Um, so I would say all of those points, um, yeah. Okay, perfect, yeah. And you know, and I'm working with my students and I actually have several out in this classroom. Hello everyone. Um, it is about building that foundation and every class that we take, every participation in a club that we do, um, the, the faculty that we get to know, it all starts to lay this foundation of who we are as professionals. And even though it might seem like it's not going to um, lead anywhere, um, you, you just never know when you're going to be writing an essay for transfer to, you know, Berkeley, UCLA, Columbia, um, you know, as you guys know, we're the number one transfer. Maybe, maybe my panelists don't know, but we are the number one transfer to the UCs. And um, we do transfer a lot of students, um, non-traditional students to Columbia as well. They, like, I think we're one of the number ones um, as a community college. So, so our, our students go far and, and it, is, it is about always, like you're saying, building that foundation. Um, we had a question, right, um, Vicki? So there was a question in the chat. Why don't we answer that question really quickly? I was just going to ask you if you wanted to, yeah. Yeah, so how does one enter the marketing industry? Um, and I'll just put this out to all four panelists. Um, maybe, Aton, you want to pick up on this one first? Um, how does one enter the marketing industry? Um, and I think they also added, Alex, correct us if we're wrong. Are you saying if you are a business and marketing major, then how do you enter the marketing industry is that what you're asking um i was just kind of saying i i was putting some information to my question like i'm asking that because i am a business marketing oh, major. Okay. okay okay thank you 
So how does one enter, and, and by the way, the answer that's about to come to everyone on this Zoom call, the answer that is about to come applies to finance, um, HR, it applies Anything. to logistics, it applies to operations. So, Eitan, do you want to answer, the, take this one? How does yeah, one enter I, the field of marketing? I think that, um, I don't know if this is the answer that you're looking for, but I think that uh, especially everyone on this call is coming into their careers at like a really exciting time in it where there's enough, uh, there's enough appetite in the, the market and there's enough variety of companies out there that you can either start something on your own or get involved in something in like a more official level. Uh, so, so if you, if you're interested in marketing specifically, like marketing can be yourself, like you can grow an Instagram following and that can be something you put on a resume and say like, I was an influencer. I grew my following by 10,000 and was able to like secure campaigns and developed like a self-marketing agency. And then on the other end of the spectrum is you, you do internships with, you know, a big company in their marketing department and apply to those to gain experience to get into it. But Mostly the, the biggest thing that I would emphasize again, and I think it's something everyone has harped on is like having an earnestness to learn and the patience to, to actually, to gain good experience. It's not necessarily checking a box that, Oh, because you're going to, you gained, you know, 10,000 followers and you can put that on a resume. That's not necessarily an indicator of future success. It's being able to, to continue that and say, Oh, like, you know, I was then able to turn this into this and then learn and grow through that. Um, so I think like, any way that you see an opportunity to to promote your image or to help out with a friend, you know, if a friend has a local storefront, I know SMC has um, a daily or a yearly arts uh, festival where they sell items that were made. And let's say you you want to run a marketing campaign on campus, like you can take the initiative, contact the professor, and set up like a, a leaflet or canvassing campaign to, to get that going and really just finding ways to, to get experience. Um, and all of that will eventually culminate in a, in a, a job. Aton, um, you guys, just so you know, Aton is part of the reason I wanted him on here is he's closest to your age group. I think probably Carlos might be as well. Hold on. I'm just, I'm going to admit someone. Aton, can you also talk about, cause kind of while you were traveling and when you first got home, you were trying to do a lot of little businesses on your own. Can you kind of talk about like, what happened and even though maybe it didn't succeed, what did you learn from it? And so it's worth trying things even if you fail, so to speak, because what you learn from them. Certainly, and, and this was a huge part of my transitioning into tech. Um, you don't necessarily, one thing that's awesome about product management is the, the background to get to it uh, is, is super unconventional. Like my boss was in LA making films and he started advising the startup on tech for for film sets and then eventually got really involved in the development process and then that exited to amazon and like he became a product manager and then there's another pm that i work with who is a comedian and like started like growing his website and then realizing there was like a tool that he could build for other comedians to get bookings and then like he became a product manager so uh really really one thing that i like about my role is that it's it's about looking for these opportunities uh, and while i was traveling um I, I took time off to travel because I, I've always been on an achievement path and I thought I could use some time to relax. And when I took time to relax, I was really bored. So I started developing this education technology with some friends of mine. Um, and when I returned to, to the United States to try to get funding for it, um, COVID hit and everything sort of dried up. So I thought, well, I can't go to a VC to get funding. What if I made a product directly for consumers to, to pay me for employing their service? So I, I established what was called a content, uh, a customer data platform for Twitch followers, basically you hacking the APIs for like basically getting data from YouTube, getting data from Twitter and getting data from Twitch to see like how, uh, how streamers can generate a larger following and then trying to go to streamers and sell them and say, Hey, I figured out a way for you to like track your user base. Like, would you pay me to do, to offer this service for you? Um, that didn't work out either, but there's, there's all these ways that you can sort of start up something by yourself and try to get something going. Um, and turn it into something that you can then talk about in an interview. So when I had this interview for my role, one of the products that I was interviewing for on this team, I ended up doing the ad tech platform because I'd worked heavily with ad tech at Walmart. Um, but one of the, the things that was interesting to my, 
now manager was that I had built this platform and they were trying to do the same thing with customer data at Macy's. So you never know when something is going to come in and just like stay curious and stay hungry and, and try to uh, tr try to just like do things that are interesting to you. All right. Thank you, Eitan. Um, and yeah, so basically I think a lot of it is, and I just put in the chat um, our, our link to all the clubs. I have a student who's um, actually a, he was, he's a STEM major, but he actually started our philosophy club. So remember, even though we are part of Rotaract right now, or maybe many of you are part of our um, investment and entrepreneur club, even as business majors, you could reach out, um, reach out to a different club of, of your area of interest. And every single one of our clubs is on Instagram, by the way, um, like Aton saying, um, create, starting to create your brand and create an image. Um, Vicki and I have been so fortunate to have, um, we have a career counselor, um, Jessica Mishkani. I'll do a shout out to her. She does our social media. She has grown us from 200 followers to over a thousand right now. And that was only in within 12 months about, or even less, nine months. Uh, so there's, so if she was ever interviewing for a full-time position at another college, she gets to talk about that. So it, it's all about laying that foundation. There's opportunities in all different places at SMC. All right, Ellen, I've got a question for you. Miss HR, you're gonna love this question. What are the salary ranges within human resources from entry level, mid to advanced? What, are you, what is the potential around salary um, in the human resources field? Hmm. Um, Just approximately. So like the HR organization at Disney is, is massive. So I, I, I don't wanna say that I'm representing the entire organization or any HR position anywhere in the, in the company. So just to be more uh, kind of clear. So that's more your, like- That's your disclaimer. <laughs> my disclaimer. Um, again, we're just such a big place. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, if you're, to, to get into HR, um, you know, coming out of school, you can really expect in the neighborhood of like 50s and 60s, um, I would say. Um, and then as you rise, you're not going to hit six figures until your management position, uh, management level in the HR function. Um, you know, so you get into management and, and then you're, you know, looking closer, uh, you know, above the, 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 the six figure mark. Um, and then it just obviously goes up from there. I mean, I don't know if you want executive data or anything, but it's more like to get, to get started. Um, you know, somebody coming out of school with like an IT degree, you know, going into like an IT and engineering, um, role is going to start out at six figures, right? So HR is certainly not the, uh, you know, the, the, place in the company that, that gets allocated the huge, the huge bucks. But, um, but yeah, so reasonable would be like in the fifties, um, I would say. And then, you know, and then the leveling matters too, you know, uh, when you come in, it, it depends if you're in like in the professional band or in more of the administrative band. So what I'm talking about is the professional band, which means that your track is to ultimately rise in the ranks. So some professional, then senior, then lead, then management, right? So that's kind of the trajectory I'm talking about. If you come in more on the admin track, then, then it'll look different. Um, and it's going to stay closer, like to the forties, fifties, even as you, as you progress in more administration. So, but you know, like I said, um, I, 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 I I mean, I assume that the folks here are probably looking on the, on the professional side of things. There are several business majors who are who are in our department, um, and so they're coming out of programs that are similar to yours, and they are attracted to HR, um, just because it is a very broad organization. You learn a lot, uh, whether you're in a specialty arm of it, like I am, which is immigration and relocations too are part of our department, or it's more generalist, more on the system side, more on the benefit side, on the payroll. I mean, there's so many different parts of HR. Um, so that's why I'm giving you a sense of how broad it is. But, um, but yeah, having a business background in the HR department is actually quite uh, meaningful for a lot, for a lot of people. If, obviously, if that's your area um, of, of interest. And, you know, a lot of people also use HR as a springboard um, to then specialize somewhere else because HR, you get exposure to all the other departments and they feel like, oh, actually, you know what, marketing is more up my alley. And then they can kind of, you know, pivot and, and go and go in that direction after you've made contacts and learned more about that business. Um, so, Ellen, I have a follow-up question. Is sure. Disney offering remote internships at this point around the company? 
Mm -hmm. um, yes, so there are internships available. So if you go on DisneyCareers.com, you'll see them posted. Um, if you've ever looked for Disney internships before, you will notice that it's significantly smaller, like significantly smaller. Um, but they are all virtual um, and they're available across the company. It's not like only one business is still doing it. Um, they are they're, um, across all of the businesses. And especially now that, um, now that everything is virtual, obviously the locations don't matter so much. So it's interesting because whereas the streaming group, for example, maybe would have not been available to like product management on the, on Disney plus, that's a huge area um, that is booming um, right now. And so they're looking for talent everywhere. Um, and being in that, the, all those operations are in New York. Um, but you know, being in LA and being able to apply there, you know, it's, um, it's, it's feasible now because there's a whole model obviously of, of, of virtual, um, internships. So, um, so yes. So that was actually one of my next questions actually is around internships at companies. And I like to put this out to all the panelists and whoever wants to pick up this question is how does a student, I mean, we are, um, we're a two year college. Um, we are, one of the number ones in the state, if not, I think the nation. <laughs> so, but how does a student stand out um, as, how do they go up against the USC candidate or the UCLA candidate? Um, does anyone want to answer that question um, in advice to our students as they're applying for these internships? I can definitely jump in on this. I think it's Thank really you, Robert. A conversation. Um, when it comes down to internships or any kind of involvement with a company, it's really about energy. And it could be, you know, you come in with very little expertise and knowledge, but you have the energy to like or learn and be curious. That really will stand out to the employer and they'll want to invest more into that individual as opposed to someone that comes in with a little more like, oh, I know this, this, and I'm entitled to this. I, I think at the end of the day, um, companies want to invest in the people that want to invest with the company. So if someone comes in with high energy and some, some sort of motivation to like really serve, I think it really leaves a good, uh, feeling to the, to the owner of the company or the CEO or the management to be like, that's probably a good pick. They might not know everything, but they're definitely willing to learn and, and willing to invest the time to be part of this team. So highly recommend that in the sense of internships or involvement with internships. So laying the foundation of um, laying a foundation of some experience, but then also um, conveying that through possibly their cover letter, but also their LinkedIn profile. I mean, I, it's like, I, I mean, I'll be honest with you. When I was in HR, when I was a recruiter, um, I would go straight to their LinkedIn profiles. And if it wasn't complete and it didn't look engaging, if it didn't look interesting, I just navigated it away to someone else who spent more time and put the effort into it. Any advice on that? Now in the world of digital, I think social plays such a big role because it creates transparency to the identity on, on, on the individual. I know for sure we take a look at every aspect of social on individuals that uh, intern here or try to apply. Um, it's just one of those things that we practice what we preach. So we really want to have an understanding of the platforms. How curious are you on the most latest to the, to the most traditional? And so, yeah, we take a deep dive. So if you are a person that's in your guys' position, I would definitely start putting out content of whatever interests you. It doesn't have to be something you're not interested in. It could be native and organic to your interest, but I think it really creates an identity and an ability for people and employers to see truly what they're gonna get in the workforce. So yeah, I definitely recommend that. Yeah, Carlos, did you have it? I saw that you unmuted. What, what's your response to this? Yeah, I just wanna uh, uh, kind of build up on from that, I would say just to use the resources that you have. So Carlos, I don't know if it's uh, my internet or your the career. Internet. You're breaking up a little bit on your, um, I think it's just the bandwidth, which we all struggle with right now. There. All right, so so Carlos, let us know. We're, I'm going to keep an eye on your on your screen and see when you um, your bandwidth is a little. I don't know if you have in my house. There's like four of us on on the bandwidth, so it's 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 insane. It's crazy. So we'll come back to you. So hold that thought. One. So um, so definitely. Hey, hold can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. 
You're still a little frozen. All right, so we'll we'll come back to Carlos. Um, you know, when when uh, he goes and tells tells everyone in his house to go off uh, go off internet <laughs> if they can. Um, all right. <laughs> Because I wanted to ask Carlos also about the salary at Merrill Lynch, because I happen to know, um, having been in corporate HR and being a um, corporate recruiter, uh, best kept secret that uh, many of your business pr professors know and all the business professionals on this call know, the people in sales are, they, they, they command oftentimes the highest uh, salaries. So um, you'd be shocked and they don't have to manage people. They don't have to be a VP or a director. And, um, and it's not like selling um, used cars. It's, it's all about relationship selling. Um, it's about uh, creating partnerships with your clients. It's B2B. It's, it's, it's a completely different type of sales transition than what we imagine it. It's not a bad word. Um, but you do need to have really great communication skills, really great follow-up skills. Um, since I have Ellen, Robert, and Aton, does anyone want to address the aspect of going into sales as, a, as an avenue? Because a lot of my students never think about it because it, it's kind of like a scary word. It's, a, it's like, oh, Jenna, really? I don't want to sell cars. And nothing wrong with people that sell cars, by the way. But you know what I mean? Is, does anyone have any advice on that really fast? And then we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to open this up in about five minutes to the students also. I can, uh, I can speak to that. Um, a little funny anecdote, like since going remote, um, I have a friend who works in sales who is very talented as a salesperson. Um, and he spends all day on the phone building relationships with people. Uh, but he is also a Twitch streamer and like streams while he's on these sales calls. Um, and he like doesn't, he's not mic'd or anything, uh, but he's, he's, he's a very talented salesperson and keeps winning all these contests at his work. But because basically what it comes down to is what Jenna talked about. It's about building relationships with people. Like if you're the type of person who likes going to the same coffee shop every day and developing a rapport with the barista and you end up getting, you know, free coffees one day a week or something, you would probably be a really good salesperson because you're good at connecting with people, like cultivating like a memorable, a memorable um, nature and then developing relationships coming through. And what happens with a lot of sales teams, um, especially the me digital media sales team um, at Macy's that I interface with, who uses the product that I develop, um, they work off of a salary based model and then pass that as commission. Um, this is the first year we launched the product and in Q4, which is the last three months of the year, we are gonna do about $20 million in display ads on the Macy's website. Um, and if they're making a base salary of you know 80 or 85 and then making points on the back end off of those sales, that's potentially millions of dollars a year for some of these people who are getting these really big sales contracts. Um, so it's definitely, it's don't sleep on sales if you, if you have a lot of those soft skills. Um, and it's, it's awesome because you, you set a lot of your own, you know, your own schedule, you set a lot of your own um, time. It's usually quota driven uh, if it's, salary base and then commission on top of that. So there's a lot of flexibility in that. Um, so it's definitely not a, a sleeper uh, career. Yeah. Career. Sure. And it's also, you guys, it's also about figuring out what industry you really are engaged in or the um, functional area of business. So really spending some time, if you're not sure where to start, think about go, go into your IG account right now and see who you follow. Is it clothing? Is it high tech? Is it science? Is it, and your answers will be right there as to the industries that maybe you should look into because every industry has marketing, every industry has HR, every industry has finance. Um, so, so kind of keeping that in mind. Um, Carlos, you're back. Did you want to, you want to try again? Yes. Can you hear Perfect. me? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Sorry about that. I don't know. I got kicked out. <laughs> Um, what I wanted to say is to use the resources at your disposal. I think I had the best time at community college. I would say even more so than almost graduate school and, and after transferring because everyone there is really 100% invested in your time. They really have all their attention on you. So if you ask them for help, they're going to help you. So talk to your professors, talk to the career center, polish your resume. Uh, just kind of follow through with everything that they give you. Um, I think that's, for me, that was a, a huge help. To be honest, 
not until I was in my junior year did I find out about in internships. I was always working. Um, mm -hmm. I always, you know, had responsibilities. So I never knew that you could join a big company or go do research somewhere else for a summer. So just keep asking, stay curious, ask for help. Um, as far as salary ranges and money, uh, that's definitely important. I would say 50s and 60s. If you're on the public side, let's say for a government organization or, or a nonprofit on the environmental side of, of my career, um, 80s and 90s, once you start getting more responsibility and being managing some accounts and over 100 beyond that. Definitely if you join some of the big four like Deloitte, McKinsey, um, Bain, those big consulting firms, you start off pretty well. Um, and right now in my role as a financial advisor is also sales driven. So the sky's the limit as much it as, really as, much, as much as you can work, um, that's how you get paid. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. Um, so I'm going to let, um, let's see, um, before we open it up to the students to discuss for the last 15, um, 20 minutes, is there anything out of the four panelists, um, let's just go around, is there anything about internships um, or any additional information that you think the students should know um, that you wish you had known um, when you're in college or it's something that you would like to impart? And if I could start and just kind of do a one minute um, for each of you. So Robert, can I have you start? Like, yeah. okay. Thanks. Yeah. So it, it's uh, the university internships, I think like in the position you guys are in now is to get involved in one. Um, and whether that's with a big company, a smaller company, I think at the end of the day, getting involved in an internship will allow you to have leverage and also open up dialogue to whatever industry you're stepping into with an internship or any kind of mentor you actually get experience, which helps you have these conversations at a higher level the more you progress in your career. Um, in regards to what kind of internships to look for, I think there's a variety of internships. I, you know, we see it all over. There's, you know, unpaid internships, paid internships. There's all sorts of things. I definitely feel like you guys should just go into an internship that you're highly interested in. Um, because if you are doing an internship to just try to land a job at a company, I can guarantee you that's probably not always guaranteed for the majority of the time. So if you really want to pursue an internship at a company, do it some, within an industry niche or conversation you're looking to either start a business in or expand your knowledge in. So that way you can really, I guess, get the most out of that internship. And if you bring enough value to that company, I'm pretty sure they're not going to want to let you go as well. So, All right. Awesome. That helps out. Um, I'm more than happy to elaborate if you like. Or that's no, that's perfect. Um, how about uh, Aton? So last words before we, um, and then actually, I don't know if the panel, panelists saw, um, the next question we're going to ask is about networking organically, but we'll get to that in a minute. So start thinking about your answers. Um, Eitan, what would you recommend as internships and just last pieces of advice um, that you wish you had known when you're in school? Yeah, I think um, patience is a virtue. I think um, Carlos was able to speak to, to that. Um, that like you you like you go through you go through life and you like you you think like oh four years in high school and then I move on to college and then like uh, you're at SMC you're there for a year or two and then you transfer to UCLA or to like another school or to USC or something like that and then it's like okay two years and then I achieve the next thing and then two years and then I achieve the next next thing when you start your career your life no longer operates on that model and so it's very easy to become impatient. Um, on, on a project. I was working on a project at Walmart that took about 18 months. And then all of a sudden it just, it just ended one day and, and that's it. And you move on to the next one. There's no process. There's no graduation. You just sort of continue doing, and there's like a perpetuity to it. And so to that, I would say remain present, remain focused, think about what you want, particularly not what, what sounds good on paper or like what's a good story you can tell yourself, you know, uh, it's, it would be very easy to go to, you know, to kill yourself at school and graduate with a 4.0 so you can get a job in management consulting. Um, I'm going to, you know, talk about management consulting because there's no one here as a consultant and kill yourself so you can make $100,000 as like a 22 year old. Um, but does that mean that that's the right thing for you? Like, no, you know, you should do things because you're interested in them and explore things that you're passionate about instead of doing something because that's what you think you're supposed to do. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Ellen, do you mind going yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, it, it builds off of like what everyone's been saying. I mean, all really, really yeah. good points. Um, really gems, like real pearls here are, are really good points. <laughs> I'm really but, focused on my career. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. But, um, but I think also like a, a really um, important um, word to think a lot about um, at this stage in your life is, is initiative um, and how you, dif in terms of differentiating yourself um, from other applicants for the same internships or for the same jobs down the road is showing as much initiative as you can. And as Aton was describing before, where you can become an influencer, you can, you can do all these things to market yourself. You can spin any effort like that into an example of, I took this on myself and I chose to do this. And that will, that will pay dividends in the corporate sector because it's just you as a person saying, I see a need and I'm going to fill that need of, if it's a personal need, like I want to get my name out there, but it, it that whenever someone is looking for an intern or for an employee, they have a problem, they have a gap in their workflow and they need someone to fill it. And they don't want, usually they don't want an automaton. They want someone who's thinking and who's going to take the ball and run with it. And so any opportunity you have to jump in as the thinker, the doer and the, the leader mm -hmm. to show your initiative um, is really going to differentiate differentiate you forever but but particularly at this point in your life like Aton's whole description of I developed this product I said anybody want to buy it right I mean like that is key um and and you can translate that into all kinds of um disciplines and all kinds of different contexts you can spin it and and package it up so that it it just um go can give you a lot of mileage um so so yeah definitely think of that word and how you can you can do that for yourself Thank you, Alan. And before we go to Carlos to take us home, um, I am going to talk about initiative because I'm sitting here on my screen. So I see who's on camera. I want to do a shout out to Justin, Melissa, Jonathan, Brian, Alex, Michael for being on screen today. Because guess what? Our four panelists, thank you for waving, <laughs> but our four panelists are looking at you guys. And guess what? I mean, there, it goes, it goes, it's a lot of initiative. And we know, ask Vicki Rothman is going to tell you right now how much Jenna hates being on camera. Jenna does not love being on camera, you guys. She's a, just so you know, she's the best career counselor in our center oh, and no, no, the no, no. best teacher. Oh yeah, I'm going to brag on you for a second. And she hates being recorded. So there you go. Yeah. And you know what? I had to learn. I had to put myself out there like, like everyone else on this, on this Zoom call. And I had to learn to be comfortable being on camera. And yes, I talked to my photo one professor who got a light ring for me and got a Logitech. My husband's a software developer and he got a camera for me. There's things you can do to take this initiative and invest in yourselves. Remember, everything about life is about investing. If I have a student I'm coaching right now, she needs to get a new interview outfit. And she goes, but Jenna, it's COVID-19. Ah. And I'm like, Cherish, you need to get a new outfit. Go shopping. So you need to invest in yourselves. All right, Carlos, last, last piece of advice. And then we got a couple questions. Um, so students, if you could start putting any of your questions into the chat, and if there's one person in particular you'd like to answer, that'd be great. All right, Carlos. All right, thank you. Um, all great points from everyone. I would say some of the key takeaways for me is that um, there is no... There is no end goal. At the end, you want to enjoy the ride. So staying curious, um, going, making a decision, and, and just kind of showing your effort to, to see it through. Um, I would say some of the most interesting friends and people that I know in my life, they're um, older than me, and they still don't know what they want to do when they grow up. Wow. <laughs> so I think, and same for me, right? I've done anywhere from technical... Uh, science research in a lab to to consulting now to finance um, you just keep learning and growing and just kind of enjoy the ride and stay curious um, show what you're capable for capable of and um, and always ask for help stay connected others need help too I was in your shoes not too long ago about 10 years ago and I've had a lot of help I've had a lot of mentors along the way so don't be shy to ask for help Okay, thank and you. And I, I also hear what you're saying, Carlos, is, and honestly, it's, it's, you know, we work at SMC, we're tenured faculty, 
this is a lifelong career for us, but it isn't this way for most people. And so I think what Carlos and everyone is saying, and you can see from um, Aton and Carlos for sure, and Robert, I'm sure is, and even Ellen with Disney is the fluidity like your careers are going to be very fluid and they're going to take you, you know, in ways, for instance, um, I do, many companies no longer provide sick pay and vacation pay because they don't want all that sitting on the books because they know people are moving in out of companies. So they just have paid time off. You just, you're sick, you take the time off. If you take advantage, of course, you probably get in trouble, but you're a generation that's going to have to be very fluid in the way that you move through. Um, Jen, are you okay? I'll go jump to some of the questions. No, I saw, I saw some of them. Let's, let's do um, networking seems to be a pretty yeah. question. In there. Yeah, people are asking about networking. I've already posted a little bit, but um, in particular, um, any advice on how to network more organically through emailing or reaching out via social media, um, things like that? How do people do networking that's, that's less not traditional than going to a group? <laughs> I definitely feel like there's a huge opportunity with content creation and collaborations. You know, personally, I have, I have a YouTube show that I try to do in the last couple of months called The People Project, where I basically just interview who I think are interesting people and people that I want to network with. So I have my production team come out and we do an interview, right? And so it gives me an opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, create content for them, with them, for my channel as well. So it's kind of like a win-win. Of course, everybody has a cell phone, so everyone could record a conversation or a podcast with somebody you'd like to, you know, get more expertise from, um, just get to know a little bit, right? There, ha there has, there doesn't have to be a motive behind the collaboration. If you just would like to meet them, network with them, you'd be surprised how many people would be open to some sort of content creation or collaboration. If you just reached out and asked via DM messenger, LinkedIn, it's really easy. Okay, Robert, do you mind putting that on in the chat? Robert has also offered, if anyone needs extra help or advice, please send him a DM on his Instagram. He's happy to help. Here's the most amazing thing, students. You have four professionals in the room. And let's just say they all four said, you can reach out to me. You can whatever. I'm happy to help. And there's 66 people. They might get three people, two people. So take advantage when someone says they're willing to speak to you and offer, your help, offer their help. They're not going to say that if they don't mean it. So go for it. Take advantage of it. Vicky, I think I add... on, on... oh yeah, go for it, Carlos. Oh please, Ada, <laughs> after you. I, I think just to to add to that, um, you can. I I don't. I'm not really on social media uh, because it like isn't good for my personal mental health. <laughs> but um, if you if you add me on LinkedIn, I and uh, there's someone in my network that you know you're curious about connecting with or like you even want to talk to me about maybe people that you'd be looking to to connect with i can think of you know other people to talk to and i think that's a good way to network organically you know whether it's your friends you go to your you're in school with your friends from high school you know who whose parents are doing something or who have a family who are doing something like oh hey like didn't you say your brother works on wall street like i'm interested in becoming a banker like can i talk to to him or like hey like you know, isn't your sister a software engineer? Like, what's that like? What's that like? I'd love to to speak with them. And then they can introduce, introduce you to more people as like, you know, to them, it becomes clear what it is you're looking for. So if you came to me and said, hey, I want to be in e-commerce and you start talking about like how much you love marketing, I would think like, hey, if, you, if you're interested in marketing within e-commerce, you should talk to this person um, because they'll have a lot better idea of like all the things that are out there than you will. Um, but you you have to, you know, be brave enough to have those conversations for sure. I just wanted to add a couple points to that. Uh, as much as you are going to reach out, don't be, don't be let down if somebody doesn't uh, write back. Uh, that happens a lot. So out of maybe 10 people that I contact, maybe one or two will reply. But what has happened through that, you want to show that you've done your, your homework. So you want to show value, that you're adding value to, to their time. So for, I'll give you one example. Um, I'm very interested in sustainability and environment, social governance. Those are the topics that I used to work on. And I read all the books from this specific professor that has taught at Harvard and Oxford. And I was very impressed by his work. I read his books, I reached out, 
and we ended up collaborating. So I did some academic research for him, um, wow. but I did the work beforehand when I reached out, I had already read his books. I sent some notes and at the end, I know you must be busy or you must be doing a lot of collaborations. If you think this is interesting, I would love to be of help. So you want to think about what value you're adding to, to their time as well. Yeah. And if I can jump in also is that, um, yeah, that's great advice, Carlos. Yeah. Um, is that, you know, networking doesn't stop when you, when you get a job, right? Um, so you'll, you'll land something um, and then there's all this internal networking that you certainly want to open yourself up to as well. And if you are in a company saying, hey, I'm the new intern in the HR department, whatever, I would love to learn about what you do. And it could be anyone, you know, it could be people are like, oh, I'll help, I'll help the intern. But people like to feel like they're in a mentor capacity. So, you know, I don't know, certain companies particularly have certain cultures around mentorship and sponsorship. These are kind of buzzwords that are out there for sure. And so you can really leverage that once you do get into an organization to ask for time from people, um, 30 minutes, could we get some coffee or, or just obviously at this point, uh, talk on Zoom or on the phone. Um, and um, don't, don't forget to leverage, you know, that internal uh, network when you're, when you land something to keep, to keep those connections um, going and to continue learning about your company. All right. Um, any other questions? Oh, thank you, Robert, for your YouTube channel. So, um, all right, any last questions from the students before we wrap it up and let everyone um, go grab a quick bite to eat before our afternoon of Zooming <laughs> and, and doing homework? So um, anything from Steven and Enrique to, to wrap us up as the business professors um, representing this group? You know, Just, I, I wanna thank uh, you and Vicki for, for organizing this today and for all the amazing panelists. You know, Everyone is super busy, and the world is very much a chaotic place right now. Um, and thanks to all the students for, for attending. Um, reach out to Career Services. Um, they're great. They provide services. If you're looking for a job or internship or want to learn how to use LinkedIn, want to learn how to network better, um, a lot of students um, don't go to them. And I wish I went to my career services more when I was in college. Um, and the business department has a lot of really great uh, programs, certificates, and classes. I was dropping some things in the, the chat while we are doing this. There's the class in HR, we have a certificate in marketing. Um, so check out smc.edu slash business. You can always uh, reach out to, to me or Enrique, um, and we're happy to help. I'll put my information in the, in the chat as well. Enrique? Yeah. yeah, so I just want to echo what Steven said. I mean, this is probably, I think, the biggest turnout we've had so far um, this year. So I want to thank the panelists for sharing some great advice to the students. And, um, you know, uh, I want to thank uh, Vicki and Jenna for helping put this together and, and uh, for the students uh, for uh, attending. So I, I do want to remind the students um, about uh, the next, uh, next week, um, we'll be having a personal finance workshop by um, one of our uh, accounting professors, which um, I think will, will be great, but it, uh, Professor Jenny Resnick. And, uh, you know, I've, I've heard in the past, sometimes students will say, you know, when they go out later on in the, in the workforce, they'll say like, this is one, to one topic that they wish they would have learned in school, and that is how to manage their finances. Right. He says, like, God, I wish I would have learned how to do that. And so here's an opportunity for those for, for you to take advantage of a free workshop on how to manage your personal finances. So um, it, it, it's and I think it, I, I strongly encourage you to look out for um, uh, the email that we'll be sending out the Instagram. So follow us on, on Instagram and um and uh, look out for that, um, and, and uh, you know, hopefully you'll you'll make it. And then the following week, we're going to have another professional, uh, David Davis, speaking on a career in public accounting. He's a professional from one of my alma uh, alma maters, I guess, 
places that I worked at is uh, Deloitte. So you'll be speaking about uh, working at Deloitte. So anyways, uh, once again, um, thank you all and uh, stay safe. All right, before you guys all go though, we have one last announcement. We're going to tell you how to make an appointment with a career counselor. I think I saw it go into the chat. I but put it you, into the chat, yep. You're facilitating, you kind of don't pay attention to the chat. That's why there's two of us. So you can call that number that Vicki put in there or email us, um, resume, LinkedIn, just like Stephen said, everything. And then I'm gonna have Vicki um, wrap us up in regards to an amazing internship at the Getty. Um, oh, right, the internship at the Getty. Uh, that is, um, we have um, we have a colleague um, who works at the Career Center, Amory Leahy, who has developed, it's taken her quite a few years to develop this relationship at the Getty. And there is a new internship for an SMC student. They really want to hire a community college SMC student, our student. And I'll let Vicki take it away and wrap us up. Thank you. I am trying to figure out, you know what, um, shoot. So the Getty is offering a summer internship. Sorry, you guys, I'm, I'm reading this. They're offering a summer internship in investments. And I'm just going to read the first paragraph. Do you want to learn about the world of investing? Take a peek at how companies like Discord, WhatsApp, and TikTok get started by venture capital, or how real estate properties like Mammoth Mountain, Under Canvas, and Amanjuri become co to destinations. Learn about stocks, bonds, hedge funds, private equity, and real estate, and how the investment support operations of a nonprofit organization like the Getty. They said that most people who come out of the internship like this start and if they get hired at the Getty at 100 grand. So I'm looking for the actual link. Give me one second, and I will put that in. I think you already put the flyer for it in You're the You're the bomb. Okay, I had closed that because I was look, reading them that. So let me just say, Anne-Marie developed a really good relationship with the Getty, and the Getty made a commitment that they wanted to, to bring an intern from SMC and that they wanted to do it in an equitable way. So you will see on the application that instead of being resume heavy, you still have to put in a resume, but they're asking questions because they really want to get to know who you are and what your background is because they're trying to help bridge the equity gap. And oftentimes a resume becomes an equity issue because if you don't know how to put together a great resume and that's what you're cold calling with, it ends up being a roadblock. So if you're interested in this at all, you can, um, when you call the Career Services Center, you can ask to make an appointment with Anne-Marie or Stephen also has learned a lot about the Getty internship as well, and he can speak of it as, as well. So unfortunately, the deadline's coming up really fast. I think it's the 12th, isn't it, Stephen? I think Anne-Marie told him the 15th. The 15th, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, anyway, if you can get it together quickly enough, it looks like an amazing opportunity, and we're hoping that it will carry on beyond just this summer. And keep in mind, you guys, this is not for art majors. This is for investment. So this is for VC. Those of you that want to go into venture capital, banking, finance, um, it, it's, and imagine how large the Getty Fund is. <laughs> it's $7 billion. $7 so they manage $7 billion across multiple wow. investments. So they're helping manage that fund. You're working with that team. Seven billion, you guys. It's an it really is an opportunity of a lifetime. So let us know if you need any assistance in in creating your portfolio, your application, your cover letter. Um, you know, we're here. We're here to help you. And we um, we do have ten career counselors at um, in the Career Services Center. Um, if Amory's booked, we can, you can just ask for a career counselor. We'll we'll help you get this resume done. So and cover letter ready. Hey Jenna, can I add a quick point to that? This yes, is Carlos. Please, Carlos. Yes. Uh, once you join the workforce. The workforce, if you can ask for your 401k or your retirement accounts, ask for sustainability and ESG. Uh, I was surprised that I work for sustainability companies that are not even our investment consultant knew what they were. Or when I asked him about it, he sent me, he sent me articles against it. So what it is, is you want to align what you believe in and treat people fairly, treat resources, natural resources uh, with care, uh, equality. Uh, equality gap, transparency. Um, so these are all things that that's part of the reason why I joined the bank to be kind of on the other side of uh, those reports. Um, but anyhow, I just kind of wanted to put that plug in. <laughs>
Yeah, I think it's important. Start to with canes as soon as you can. That was a that's a regret Jenna has. So you know, start that at twenty two. All right, um, or whenever. I mean, whenever you have access to one. So remember, the company is going to give you money to invest. Um, they usually do a match. So, all right, and you guys, it's twelve thirty um, thirty two.